Now, Nessa girl, I couldn't even lay down good. Y'all in here just tearing up my damn phone. I'm trying to lay down and take me a little piece of nap before I got to punch in and these people clock on TGIF later on tonight. I'm just laying down and my phone just is steady ringing, ringing. I'm like, Lord, who done died, Lord? I was scared to turn over the phone. But, child, after I read what the hell I read by Diddy, quiet as it's kept, bitch, I think we might have preferred that somebody old had done died. What I'm talking about? Baby, baby, Cassie, baby, Cassie, Cassie say, baby, she gonna show a bitch how to go down the slide and how to play chess, not checkers. Wanna know what I'm talking about? Let's talk about it. Here it go. That's a girl. Let me tell y'all something. It's a whole lot of shit going on in this last quarter of 2023. We got Darius Jackson over there whooping Kiki ass. We got Will Smith allegedly getting fucked in the ass. We got Jada Pinkett telling all the business. We got Chris Sean done knock the shit out of James in the face. And now we got Diddy and Cassie. And Cassie filed a $30, $30 million lawsuit against Diddy. Now, let me tell y'all something. I'm going to take my time with this. I ain't finna paraphrase, bitch. I'm finna read the article to you. And then we're going to come back and talk about it. It say, it's not looking good for Diddy. According to the New York Times, Cassie is filing a $30 million lawsuit against the mogul for what she is claiming is years of abuse and rape. In the suit, Cassie says after she met him in 2005 when she was 19, he began a pattern of control and abuse that included giving her uh, drugs, beating her, and forcing her to have sex with a succession of male prostitutes. For those dumb girls who don't know what succession means, that means back to bike in a row, multiple, while he filmed the encounters. In 2018, the suit says near the end of their relationship, Diddy forced his way into her home and raped her despite her denying his advances. Cassie say Diddy was controlling from the very beginning of their relationship. Says he would often give her drugs including ecstasy and ketamine which she believes led to her memory loss which she unfortunately deals with to this day. She claims Diddy would beat her multiple times a year but she was scared to report it to the police and feared that he would abuse her more. In one incident in 2009 Diddy alleged came into the room allegedly came into the room Enraged when he saw Cassie talking to a talent agent, pushed her into the car and kicked her repeatedly in the face, making her bleed. The suit says that after seeing the violent repercussions, Miss Ventura felt that saying no to Mr. Combs would cost her something. Her family, her friends, her career, or even her life. In another incident, Diddy grew so angry about her dating the rapper Kid Cudi that he said he would blow up the rapper's car. Around that time, the suit says Kid Cudi's car exploded in his driveway. She even claims he once hung someone off the 17th floor balcony. The suit also says he began coercing her to engage in a fantasy called voyeurism in which she was directed to have sex with a succession of male prostitutes while Diddy watched, masturbated, took pictures, and shot videos. They were called freak-offs. He even allegedly punched her in the face, giving her a black eye during one of the freak-offs. It was caught on camera, but Diddy allegedly paid for it to disappear. And I'm going to tell y'all something, bitch. I believe every single word, every word down to the article, I believe. And here's the thing. Y'all already cutting up in the comments. Oh, the white man must be making her do this. Oh, somebody must need money. And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. You're right. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has to have their day in court. I ain't seen a, a damn piece of proof or evidence. I was not there. I did not watch nor participate. But I'm going to tell you something. I believe it. I believe it. And it's not for no pointed reason. It's not because I want to see Diddy taken down. I don't, it's not because I want to see this powerful black man be brought down. There's just something in my soul that made me believe it. And I'm going to tell you why I believe it. It's the, it, I'm going to tell you the part about it that I believe the most. The succession of male prostitutes while he filmed it and masturbated. I'm sorry, y'all. That, that is just the level of creativity 
coupled with the level of embarrassment that somebody would have to endure to make some shit up like that. I believe that's the part I believe. I believe it. Had all the men lined up fucking her and he was sitting there recording it on video and, and, and playing jacking off. I mean, listen now, that type of thing is hot just as long as everybody involved is a willing participant. You know what I'm saying? We all grown here. But he was sitting up making that girl required as his kept. I guess it's better that you was being fucked by male prostitutes and not his friends because that would have created a whole other situation. But baby, let me tell you something. This just the shit that hit the fan. We don't want to see the shit that's going to hit them court transcripts. And here's the thing, it ain't going to hit the court transcript because if Diddy know like I know, he going to pay for this shit to go away. Even if he settles at the amount in which she's asking for. That girl been with Diddy for a long time. I forgot how many years, so I'm not going to begin to speculate. It was over a damn decade. He got the best years of her life while them prostitutes was over there fucking her. And I want to know who got the tapes. Diddy better hope the same Negroes that had R. Kelly tapes ain't the one that got his. Because if so, them shits going to hit the fan. And I'm here to tell you something. I wouldn't be surprised if Cassie got one or two of them tapes. Mama wasn't stupid. Mama didn't leave with nothing. See, we thought Mama left with nothing. No, Mama had to go get her mental right. She had to go get her life right. She had to wait for the perfect time. And she played chess with his ass and not checkers. And now she is striking. She is striking. Now, you know, a lot of people, I can already hear y'all, why she stayed so long? Oh, well, you stayed, you should have left. And, you know, we're learning that for somebody that's not been in an abusive situation, it's very easy for us to say those types of things. But, you know, there, there's no rhyme or reason to why people who are in abusive relationships stay. They do for whatever reasons. Fear is one of the big ones. She said that she was fearful that he'd do something to her family or moreover, take, take her life. I mean, at the point in which she's allegedly getting kicked in the face, at the point in which you get kicked in the face, it ain't nothing that a bitch won't do to you. Okay, I was having a conversation with a friend the other day and a friend, I was telling a friend that after somebody, if somebody puts their hands on you, there's no way in hell they can possibly love you. Putting your hands on somebody is second from the bottom of the worst thing you can possibly do to somebody. What's left? What is the only thing you can do after you hit somebody? That's worse than that. The only other thing you can do is kill them. That is literally the only thing that comes after hitting somebody when you're in a relationship. So I can understand her being fearful. But see, here's the question, because we already know what Cassie finna do. Cassie finna take her cashier's back. Uh, Cassie finna take her cashier's check to the bank and cash it. And her and her white man finna live happily ever after off them royalties and them publishings from them bad boy artists. The real question on this thing is what the hell is Carisha finna do? Carisha Fever, Carisha Fever. Matter of fact, what time it is? It's 5.46. I'm finna run my ass up to U-Haul. They close at 7.30. I'm finna go up there and get a truck. We'll be right there at 8.45, girl. You better have your shit packed and be standing outside. And we ain't got time, Carisha, for you to be him and humming. Because while I got this truck, we got to swing by Kiki house and get that nigga shit out of her house and take that shit to the dump. So you need to be ready to go. When you hear me blowing the horn, bitch, you need to be at the door with your bags piped. All right, because we ain't got time. 2023 don't give a fuck about nobody. And it's taking bitches up out of here left and damn right. Could you imagine being Diddy sitting somewhere, you in public, eating, eating a salad at Boston Market, stirring up your sweet tea like this? Because, you know, black people, when we got ice and shit, we got to do it like this. Because you know how we be doing. We be talking, yeah, girl, what you doing this weekend? For real, you know somebody will get us in the club. <gasps> what? You start scrolling through your timeline and you seeing all of this. I know when this man woke up today, this was not what he had on his mind. This was not what he had on his mind. Now, see, here's what's funny. I would be curious to know if as a courtesy, Cassie is suing for $30 million, which says she wants money 
in order to be made whole. I would be curious to know if she did him the courtesy through her attorney of reaching out and saying, you know, um, basically, you know, you could give me a drop or I'm going to sue. Or if she just went straight to the courts. Now, see, here is why, excuse me, here is why I say shit finna really hit the fan and I believe every single word. An attorney is not going to take a case this large and lose and sully their reputation. You see how quick this thing caught fire? For an attorney, a good attorney, to take this case, file it, attach their name to it, I'm pretty sure that they had to see some level of documentation and proof that would convince a jury beyond a shadow of a doubt that these things happen. Cassie got receipts. <clears throat> you can't live with somebody and go with somebody for 10 plus years. Hell, you can't go with somebody for more than two years and not have no receipts. Cassie got receipts and she gonna get her money. She gonna get her money. Now you watch and see Diddy already in that stuff with Ciroc and the De Leon people suing the people. Diddy, you ain't got to worry about suing the people for want to get unattached to them people because them people finna unattached from your ass immediately, okay? And you watch and see how many things Diddy begins to lose as this thing unfolds. Uh, and we don't even know Cassie like that. We don't even know enough about that lady. It's me and you. Yeah, but it's her and that white man. Just me and you and that check. Baby, she finna get that shit. She finna get that shit. And um, my suspicion tells me that this is going to be settled outside of court. This is going to be settled outside of court because, again, having the church transcript, the church, that might as well be the church. That's where they all need to go. They need Jesus. Having the court transcript have to outline in detail what all the hell was going on and have it, having it in writing for as long as she's been with him and for her to have to go into detail about how them men was running the train on her and all these and how he was giving her drugs and stuff, to have that in writing to live on forever in legal documents, that will forever ruin Diddy, okay? Talking about surviving R. Kelly, surviving Bill Cosby, surviving Jonathan Majors. Now we got goddamn surviving Diddy. I'm sorry. It's time for y'all to spray some of these white men. Now, we don't have too many black ones. We don't have too many black ones. I guess the white people say, y'all always want to put all the school shootings on us. So, bitch, we finna give y'all a category that's uniquely black. And that's drugging up the girls and running trains on them with the male prostitutes. Girl, this is too much. And like I said, I can't get past this prostitution part, okay? Now, I ain't gonna lie to you, bitch. This the type of gossip I like. This the type of shit I like to sit around the table and run my damn mouth about because this tea is so sweet. And see, now, I was never one of them conspiracy theory people talking about, oh, Kim, uh, Kim Porter was coming out with a book. He had her killed. This person was finna say something. He did something. He had, I'll be sure, messed up. But baby, after from what Cassie detailed about getting kicked in the face and fearing for her life and knowing that you was doing all this type of stuff and that people hold your secrets and that you scared for your secrets to get out, it's kind of looking like I might have to revisit your involvement in some of these strange happenstances around people's um, health declining or people losing their life, which is some serious allegations. But based on what Cassie don't put it in them court papers, it looked like you have the wherewithal to do some of what she said, especially down to that kid Cuddy car blowing up, baby. And like I said, this just a little piece. This just a little piece that we got now. Wait till them depositions and shit hit the fan if they ever hit the fan. I'm going to tell you right now. Diddy done already called his financial advisor and looked at his 401k to see how much he could take out um, without penalty to get this dog on girl to make this go away. This is one of those. You don't want this to go to court. This will be the trial of the century. And quiet as it's kept, Kiki Palmer 
and Jada and Will Smith. Y'all need to be thanking Cassie ass right now for pushing y'all ass out the press. So hopefully Kiki Mama don't say shit else and don't no more recordings come out of her spitting all over the bathroom mirror and saying she gonna put a bullet in the man and that Usher is gay. Hopefully this will give Kiki a break and, and Tamar, you gonna catch a break too because Baby, we don't care about none of that. We want to talk about the Diddy and this success. See, it's the succession for me. She said in her in her pain and in her trials and tribulations, y'all ain't gonna make her out to be no hoe. Because the paper should have said he hired male prostitutes to run a train on me, bite the bite. But this is a succession of male prostitutes. And let me ask y'all something. Do y'all think it's better to get punched by a bunch of male prostitutes? Or by your man friends. I'm just curious. I mean both could be hot. If we are all into that. This ain't about what my fantasies. Nevertheless. This some mess y'all. This is some mess. Carisha you gotta. You have to distance yourself from this mama. You, ha you have to. D d just kind of like when, when Michael Jackson went through his thing and then Janet Jackson ended up losing some of her stuff. Carisha, you got a lot of momentum going with your career right now. Unfortunately, thanks to Diddy. And I know it's probably going to mess y'all up socially and relationship wise if you put a semicolon in between y'all relationship right now. But from a brand perspective, Carisha, please. Please leave. You you got the you and 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 you have to come out and make a statement. But something in my spirit tell me, Carisha gonna do that. I'm sticking by my nigga type of thing. She give me an old sticking by my nigga type of thing. But hopefully P and Coach get involved and say, uh uh, baby, you can stick, you can do it, baby, stick it, baby, behind closed doors. But publicly, we creating some distance. And you might have to take Carisha, please, off a of motherfucking revolt and carry that shit around the HBO or uh, Fox Soul. Bring it over here, child. Cause God, Lord knows we need the damn help. Nevertheless, y'all, this a whole lot going on. But that's a girl. Drop down in the comments and let me know do you believe some of the word? Or do you believe every single word? Because, bitch, I believe every single word that's down to the internet. Every word. Let's talk about it.